JAPAIGU's Safe Surgery Program builds the capacity of obstetric surgical team members in low- and middle-income countries by using team-based continuous learning and performance improvement activities. Globally, nearly 20% of all pregnant women will require a cesarean section. And by providing timely cesarean section, nearly 100,000 maternal deaths could be averted every year. Team-based simulation and using a simulator as an anchor for this activity is an excellent immersive technique that replicates real-life scenarios and helps develop healthcare workers' knowledge, skills, attitudes, and importantly, teamwork and communication. However, C-section simulation is typically underutilized due to lack of a C-section simulation model and a deficit of the knowledge and experience of how to run a simulation to maximize learning outcomes with participants. Our objective for this video is to demonstrate how to run an effective simulation for C-section with a low-tech or low-fidelity C-section box simulator. What I'm going to do here is just demonstrate how to assemble our uh, kind of low technology or low-fidelity uh, C-section box uh, simulator. The abdomen and the uterus is going to be, a, in this case, a plastic bucket uh, that's going to be deep enough uh, to hold the, the fetus in the placenta, um, but shallow enough that it can sit on, uh, on a patient's abdomen uh, to facilitate the simulation using a natural client. The, and how we assemble this is in layers. So using, uh, again, readily available materials or repurposing materials. Um, and the first layer that we have is going to be the uterine layer. Right? And so the uterine layer is just a simple fabric. And it's important to have the fabric, uh, for all, all the pieces should be about the same size, the fabric that will fit over the, uh, the bucket. So now the next layer is the peritoneum, okay? And you can use either just cling wrap, cellophane, um, or anything that's really thin that's easy to go through, like peritoneum is. In this case, we're just using, uh, repurposing a, uh, a gown, a surgical gown. Um, and so a nice thin layer that's easy to, to penetrate through. The next layer is the rectus muscles. And with the rectus muscles, again, you can use different types of fabric, um, but if, if it's thin fabric, then you want to uh, roll it over several times so it's a little bit thicker and that you have uh, the, uh, the separation of the rectus muscles in the middle. And so this, again, aligns right in the middle. So the next layer is the fascia layer. And so this can be um, a thicker white plastic. Uh, sometimes duct tape is used, but I think a thicker white kind of plastic or other material is, uh, is better to use. And this, uh, again, overlies the uh, rectus muscles like that. And then the next layer is the subcutaneous uh, layer. And you can use bubble wrap or you can use uh, foam rubber. Uh, to represent that. So something that's easy to cut through and easy to uh, bluntly uh, dissect. And that fits over just like that. So you can see all the, the different layers are now forming, uh, forming together. And the uh, last layer is the skin. And so the skin layer, again, is going to be uh, uh, fabric. And this lies over the entire layer. And so you just simply pull up the different layers pull them all together, and then with a good heavy-duty stapler, then you just staple down. Okay, so now we, we've assembled all, all the layers. And the next is that we want to secure it onto the, onto the box. And uh, it's important, depending on what your case is, to uh, you need to know where the, the, uh, where the fetal head is. So if you have, for example, you're going to have um, uh, its vertex, uh, then you know that it's going to be, for example, vertex and this one is, is on this end, um, and if you wanted to have a breach, then uh, you can make the incision here. And what's nice about these box simulators is that you can actually get two simulations out of, out of one. Uh, so you can, do a, for example, do a, a cut on this end um, and deliver the baby uh, and, and the placenta. And for the next one, you just replace the baby, actually going back inside the incision, and then using the, um, uh, the end on the other side. And so uh, we've now secured the an entire uh, layers all the way around, as you, as you can see. And now you're ready to do your C-section simulation. Here are the key components of facilitating a simulation.
and the simulation team members. At the start of the simulation, the director provides to the surgical team and the observers a brief introduction to the cesarean section simulation and the objectives and purpose of the session, which are team-based practice to use a surgical safety checklist correctly, improve teamwork and communication, and incorporate clinical and surgical updates into practice. The director should then designate the roles of the participants and share the expectations for each of the roles for the simulation. The director leads the simulation and manages time. The surgical team participants conduct the simulation. There should be at least a surgical provider, surgical assistant, and anesthetist, but can include a scrub tech, circulating nurse, and a newborn care provider if available. The surgical team size and composition should be the same as is typically available in their respective facilities. Identify an actress or volunteer to act as the surgical patient. The observers will evaluate the actions of the simulation participants. The director will need to decide in advance and then inform participants if the simulation will run all the way through or if interruption for correction will occur. The director provides the case scenario. The case is a 20-year-old lady, uh, J1P0, and uh, 39 weeks of pregnancy. And the surgical team then recreates the clinical situation, coordinating the case with a box simulator and within the established time allotted for this activity. At the end of the simulation, the director debriefs with the participants. Now we are going to do the feedback session. Providing time for self-assessment and reflection, and then allows the observers to give constructive feedback. Okay, now it's time for us observers to give this team feedback. And we, as always, we start with what they did well before we go to talk about areas that would need improvement. Okay, so during the observations, where do we think this team uh, did excellent? Yes. Timely cesarean section can avert nearly 100,000 maternal deaths every year and reduce neonatal mortality by 30 to 70%. Team-based training for cesarean section in a simulated environment helps improve skills, confidence, teamwork, and communication, which will lead to improved safety and quality of cesarean birth care. Choma 